Welcome ladies and gentlemen, it's Targram bringing you another episode of Lore of League of Legends. I present to you the lore of Poppy, the Iron Ambassador, and Galio, the Sentinel Sorrow. Enjoy. Yordles are an interesting race, there's no doubt about that. Those short, colourful people love spending time with each other playing games and chatting. They're rarely cruel, brutal, or even rude. That's what makes them so popular amongst the people of Valoran. If someone wanted to underestimate Yordles though, he'd make a grave mistake. The race is known for its skilled warriors, extraordinary engineers, and trained blacksmiths. The skills that Yordles have mastered are no secret to anyone. That's why one of Damasian generals has contacted a Yordle smith, Blomgrom, to craft a helmet worthy of his position in the army. It was meant to be a glorious beyond comparison. The smith accepted the contract and put all his efforts into completing the helmet, making it the finest of his works. There was only one thing that Blongrum had loved more than his work, Poppy, his young daughter. She was not alike her friends. When other girls played games and braided wreaths, Poppy would rather stay at her father's forge, watching him work. She spent her childhood helping in her dad's armor shop, and she always loved it. When Poppy was strong enough to lift her father's hammer, the Wampa, Blongron swelled with pride, watching his own daughter work on her first item in his own workshop. To his surprise, the young girl demonstrated incredible natural gift for smithing. Blongron was proud of his girl, and he had sworn to himself that he would do anything it takes for Poppy to become a great blacksmith like himself. When working on the commissioned helmet, the smith had decided to finally let his daughter take part in the creation of something bigger, something greater than things she would always craft on her own. She was burdened with setting the center jewel, the most important piece of the whole work. It was no easy task, but Poppy put her heart into it, and made no mistakes. When the work had been finished, both Poppy and Blumgrun had prepared for it to be delivered, but because of its value they weren't intending to have anyone else deliver the crown. They'd rather go to Demacia themselves and deliver it in person. Those two set off from Bandle City, carrying the helmet straight to the heart of Demacia. Unfortunately, word of the General's request had reached Noxus. The High Command would never pass an opportunity to harass any of the Demacian Generals, and so two assassins had been sent to steal the helmet and bring it back to Noxus. They've assaulted Blungrum and Poppy on the road, hoping to retrieve the helmet. Blomgrun wasn't going to accept that. He stood up to the assassins, trying to fight them, and give Poppy enough time to run away with the helmet and save her life. He didn't have any chances to defeat the two skilled assassins in combat, but he was trying his best. Unfortunately though, it wasn't enough. He was slain on the road, while Poppy had been watching everything from a nearby bush. When the two assassins left, Poppy left her hiding spot and buried her father. She was broken, depressed, and lost but she had intended to finish what they'd started. She grabbed the Wampa and the helmet and followed down the road, alone. She was just a little girl, lost somewhere in Valoran, but she had no choice. She could not just return to the Bandal city and fail her father. He wouldn't want his work to go to waste. Days passed before Poppy reached Demacia. Dirty, exhausted and frightened. Poppy made her way into the palace and found the general, handing him the helmet, and refused any payment. She knew that her father would want the general to wear this helmet, and no sum of money could compensate for her loss. And just after that, Poppy collapsed, finally letting her body get some rest. The general noticed the girl's determination and sacrifice. He's spoken with King Jarvan and representatives of Bandal City in order to secure a position for the girl. She was to become a Yordle ambassador to Demacia to honor her determination and honor. Poppy had taken the position, doing her best not to fail anyone. Not so long after, Poppy volunteered to join the League of Legends, seeking to crush Noxians with the hammer of her father. Yalio, that was his name, at least the one that he knew. There were many like him, other constructs, golems created by magical experiments and rituals, now forbidden by the League of Legends. They used to be very popular amongst expert spellcasters. They could serve as tireless guardians and sentinels watching over villages or people. 
There was one man known for his art of crafting artificial life, a mage called Durand. He spent his whole life to create the perfect golem that he could always trust. That's how he was born. Galio, the work of his life, a mighty construct shaped after a gargoyle crafted of rough dark stone. He was meant to be a guard on Durand's journeys and allow him to perform his work without need to fear about any outside dangers, and Galio made no mistakes. He was perfect. He was in fact so perfect that he'd drawn the attention of a Nox in high command. Seeing the work of the Damasian Golemsmith as a danger to the power of Noxus, he was meant to be disposed of, to make sure that no more golems of that might could be crafted. He was assaulted and heavily outnumbered by Noxian assassins. Galio could not even react before his master had been slain, lying lifeless on the ground. The protection of his master was the only reason he even existed. Now Durin was dead, and Galio had no purpose in life. He'd fallen into deep depression, turning back into a lifeless statue to mourn over his master that he couldn't protect. He stood there for months, maybe years. Nobody can even tell. Surrounded by fruit trees with fruits ripening on the branches, he stood there, day after day. Night after night, he would not even move slightly. He had no reason to. He became a monument to his own failure. Something happened, though. Something that Galio would never have expected. Many people have visited the orchard. Some have rested there. No one was brave enough to rest just next to the imposing statue. But this girl didn't seem scared. She was no taller than four feet, wielding a huge hammer and carrying a helmet of some sorts. She sat down in Galio's shadow, getting a rest before moving forward. She was there just a few minutes, but Galio had felt something. He could easily feel her emotions. She was sad, desperate. There was a heavy burden on that young person's shoulders. That's not what had inspired him. There was something else about that yordle. She was determined to finish her goal. Before Galio could even react, the girl was already gone, heading straight to Demacia. Feeling ashamed that she had enough strength to go forward, he started thinking about his own purpose, his own past. There was something that his master always wanted. The reason why he had been bringing so many golems to life. He wanted them to protect the borders of Demacia. He wanted to keep them safe from Noxian advances. Perhaps, perhaps there was a way for Galio to fulfill that. Perhaps he could be of some use, other than standing vigil over Durin's remains. He's broken his stone form, arising from a silent purgatory. He quietly followed in the footsteps of the young girl, and he had a new purpose now. He failed to protect his master, but he won't fail to protect Demacia. That's why he's made. That's his purpose. And that's all we prepared for you this time around. We hope you enjoyed it. Please let us know by pressing the like button or leaving your feedback in the comment section below this video. If you liked it in particular, you might consider it adding to your favorites and sharing it around. We would like to once again remind you that we've now produced over 35 episodes of lore videos for League of Legends alone, and many popular champions have already been covered. There's no reason to request someone who's already been covered. And as always, I'll see you next time.